you heard that there are many versions of JavaScript, so what are the differences between them? Why were so many new versions released just in the last few years? Which version should you learn to develop websites and web applications? And what's with this weird ES insert year number naming convention? Those are all valid questions, and this is going to be the topic of this video. By the way, bear in mind, you might be quizzed on this topic during your next front-end or full-stack developer interview. All the more reason to make sure that you know this topic very well. First, let's take a quick tour into the strange history of JavaScript, because it will help you understand why so many new versions came out in the recent years and what the motivation was behind releasing all these new versions. The original creator of JavaScript is a guy called Brendan Eich. Not only he was involved with Netscape, a name you might be familiar with, but he's also a co-founder of Mozilla Firefox. But for the purposes of this video, he's the guy we will blame for all the bad and good things JavaScript has going on for it. JavaScript was announced in a 1995 press release by Netscape and Sun Microsystems. The press release wrote, the JavaScript language complements Java, Sun's industry-leading object-oriented cross-platform programming language. You heard it right. JavaScript was advertised as something that complements Java, as if the whole purpose was to capitalize on Java's then popularity in order to quickly gain adoption of this new bastard child of a scripting language. The whole thing was really like a cheap marketing gimmick. It is not surprising that with this type of approach, initial architectural decisions of JavaScript felt inadequate. Brendan Ike himself called the language a rush job in one of his talks when he was describing the language. Things like inconsistent behavior of plus and minus when you use them on different primitive types, weird comparison results like true plus true plus true equaling to true, all of that not only made it much harder to write complex real-world applications, but they also spawned a lot of language memes you can find even today on the internet. Surprisingly, the language was very popular due to the rising popularity of internet and web. Despite that, very little effort was put into improving the language itself and making it easier to use. From 1999 to 2009, developers had to struggle with the fourth edition of the language, ES4. Until 2009 came and introduced ES5. ES5 was still not great if you ask me, but nevertheless it was a thing between 2009 and 2015. That's when real change happened. ES2015, or ES6 as its unofficial name, came out and became a catalyst for yearly new releases of the language. And boy, it was a release. It introduced so many new language features that improved web developers' productivity. The web community instantly jumped on board. The new language features were absolutely welcome during the times when web applications started getting more and more complex, and the old ES5 started becoming just too much of a pain to work with by then. So what did ES2015 introduce that was so groundbreaking? I won't be able to cover all these changes in detail, but here are what I consider to be the most important new syntax features introduced in that edition. Syntax that you see every modern web application use nowadays. First, ES2015 introduced classes. Secondly, we got template strings which greatly simplified string manipulations. Next, we got some variable declaration love in the form of let and const declarations. Then, we got some syntactic sugar around declaring functions and handling this keyword with arrow functions. And finally, we got nature support of promises. Let's quickly go through each of these features and see what problems they solved before moving on to the next JavaScript versions. ES6 classes. A class is a fundamental concept in object-oriented programming, and believe me or not, JavaScript before with the version ES2015 did not have official classes. You were still able to create constructs similar to classes but it involved hacking prototypes. Here's how you'd create a car class with methods drive, stop, and honk in ES5. You'd first create the function car, then you'd extend the function's prototype by adding new methods to it, drive, stop, and honk. Extending prototype is now looked down on as it's associated with security vulnerabilities and considered a very bad practice. So ES2015 came out and introduced proper classes. This is how you can declare a class nowadays. As you can see, the syntax is much more similar to the way you would declare a class in other languages, such as Java and .NET. If you ask me, it's a welcome addition to JavaScript. 
Template strings is a feature that allows the developer to inject variables into strings with a special backticked string declaration. Previously, if you wanted to build a string with a variable inside of it, you'd have to write something like this. Or if you wanted to avoid using plus signs, you'd need to use an array like this. There has to be a better way, and that better way is using template strings. This allows you to write the same logic in a much more compact way. It's much easier to read and understand. The next big improvement was the introduction of let and const. First, let's talk about const. It's the simplest one of the two. It allows you to declare a value that cannot be reassigned. So if you run this script, you'll see that t cannot be reassigned. There are some special gotchas with cons, like it still allows you to change the values of object fields. So if you run this script, it's valid. But overall, cons are a welcome addition to the language. A bigger problem that let and const solve is the problem of block scoping. See, before ES 2015, a web developer only had limited amount of ways to declare a variable. One way was to declare it as a global variable, and another way is to declare it with a var keyword. But var had one problem. For example, let's look at the following code. If you read it at the first glance, you would think that it's looping from 0 to 5 and printing values 0 to 5. But instead, when you run the script, you will get 55555. Five, five, five. It has to do with the weird way JavaScript hoist values declared with var. In order to fix that, you need to replace var with let. And now when you run the script again, you'll get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the expected behavior. Arrow functions are simple to understand. Basically, instead of declaring your function this way, you can declare it this way. Now, aside from it being a nice syntactic sugar, it also solves the problem with handling the this keyword. Take this for example. If you look closely at the code, drive on line 14 and drive on line 16 are both referring to the same function drive. But let's run it and check what's printed out. Well, this is so weird. The same function has different values for this. That's the problem with declaring functions with the keyword function. The value of this changes depending on who called the function. Arrow functions do not struggle with this problem. If we run drive arrow function, We will see that the output is the same no matter if the function was called from test to a variable or the global scope. It's not a surprise that arrow functions are preferred to normal functions nowadays. Promises. A promise is a construct that helps you write asynchronous code avoiding callback hell. Think about this code for a second. So this code is pretty simple. It just prints do something in an intervals of 100 or 150 milliseconds. So let's run it. There's one problem with this code. It keeps growing horizontally the more wait for you nest, making it harder to read. That's when a promise comes in. We can turn wait for into a promise like this. And then we can call it this way. Now suddenly you can write multiple asynchronous steps in a much more elegant way. And that's the beauty of promises. You can find a full list of JavaScript changes on a GitHub page like this one. There you will see a pretty overwhelming table mapping different features to the version of JavaScript they were released in. One thing for sure is, ES 2015 was the JavaScript version that kickstarted major changes in the language. 
Changes that aim to fix JavaScript and make it more than just a programming language finished in a rush with the intent to ride on a wave of Java fame. It is no surprise that JavaScript is in top 10 of the most popular languages and it deserves all the syntax love that it's getting. Thanks for watching the video. At Coding Ways, we teach you how to code like a real pro. If you like what you learned, press the like button. It will make us more popular on YouTube.